Space Invasion of Lapland Rimed Invasion I Lapland in Sweden and Terra in the Midnight Sun internationally is a 1959 Swedish-American black-and-white science fiction monster film released to Swedish cinemas on August 19, 1959. The film was produced by Bertel Jernberg and Gustav Unger, directed by American Virgil W. Vogel, and stars Barbara Wilson, Robert Burton, and Stan Jester. Written by Arthur C. Pierce, the film had some of its dialogue in English. Space Invasion of Lapland was heavily re-edited by American producer Jerry Warren and had newly filmed American sequences added. The film had its U.S. release in 1962 under the title Invasion of the Animal People as a double feature with Warren's Terror of the Bloodhunters. Topic. Plot While traveling in Sweden, Diane Wilson meets up with her uncle, famous geologist Dr. Vance Wilson Robert Burton, who has come there to help investigate the recent landing of what appears to be a large meteorite. Diane is courted by her uncle's associate, Dr. Eric Engstrom Sten Jester, though she aggressively plays hard to get, at first. A romance develops, and eventually the journey is interrupted by the news of a large herd of mutilated reindeer in Lapland. Both scientists immediately fly there, far north in the Arctic mountains of Lapland, near the site of the meteorite crash. To the irritation of both scientists, Diane stows away aboard their aircraft. When they arrive, the meteorite is actually determined to be a round alien spaceship, and she suddenly realizes just how dangerous a decision she has made. An enormously tall, hairy biped creature, with powerful jaws, tusks, and large round feet, under the control of three humanoid aliens in the spaceship, comes out of nowhere and begins menacing the scientists and the native Laplanders. The tall beast destroys the scientists' aircraft, killing the soldier guarding it, and begins tearing apart Laplander houses with its bare hands. As Dr. Engstrom and Diane are trying to ski away to safety, the hairy monster attacks again and is able to capture Diane. She screams and faints. Meanwhile, a search party has been formed, now carrying fire torches as night begins to fall. They hear Diane's screams and go toward the sound. Dr. Engstrom arrives and watches as the hairy monster carries her off. He hurries toward the torch-carrying Laplanders and tries to alert Dr. Wilson, who is with them, that the creature now has Diane. Carrying her to the snow-buried alien spaceship, the extraterrestrial monster suddenly begins displaying tenderness toward his captive, a result of mind control exerted over the creature by the humanoid aliens. She runs into an adjoining ice cave and screams and faints again when the aliens come near. The aliens leave the cave and see the mass of lighted torches coming their way. The hairy monster picks up Diane and heads away from the buried spaceship. The Laplanders give chase and are finally able to confront the huge creature, who is now standing with its back to the edge of a deep snow cliff. Angry villagers begin throwing their fire torches, and the tall monster carefully places Diane on the ground, where she is able to roll a few feet away. More torches are thrown and the hairy creature catches on fire. It falls backward over the cliff to a fiery death, starting an avalanche as it tumbles down into a steep chasm. The aliens, seeing this on their viewscreen, take off, launching the spaceship back the way they came. Diane and Eric walk off into the sunset, deeply in love. Topic. Cast Barbara Wilson as Diane Wilson Sten Jester as Eric Engstrom Robert Burton as Dr. Frederick Wilson Bank Blomgren as Cole Robert Bottiger R.K. Gronberg as Dr. Henrik Gosta Prusalius as Dr. Walter Ullman Doreen Denning as Anna, Drive Ullman's secretary Itla Frodi as Girl in the Sports Car Britta Borg as the singer Lars Arain as the monster John Carradine as narrator US version Topic. US release According to Swedish producer Bertel Jernberg, his partner, co-producer Gustav Unger, was entrusted to act as their American agent, and after telling Jernberg that Paramount is going to buy it, he promptly sold the film to American producer Jerry Warren and kept all of the money he received from the transaction for himself. For its U.S. theatrical release on May 3, 1962, the Swedish film was shortened by distributor Jerry Warren to 55 minutes from its original 73-minute running time. Warren gave the film a whole new beginning, adding an on-screen narrator, John Carradine, who opens and closes the film, bookending its revised storyline. 
New footage, set in America, was also shot with star Barbara Wilson for her Diane Wilson character that involved an earlier, traumatic UFO incident. Another new scene, set in Sweden, has her character receiving a lengthy phone call. Additional scenes were also added of two ham radio operators in a wilderness lap cabin trying to communicate by shortwave radio with the outside world. Both characters never turn up again in the story. After other Swedish plot details were re-edited or cut entirely from the original like a nude Wilson shower scene, this new version was distributed in America under Jerry Warren's title Invasion of the Animal People. It appeared as a 1962 double feature with Warren's original feature Terror of the Bloodhunters. When Invasion of the Animal People went into U.S. television syndication, more of the American footage was added, increasing the film's running time to 80 minutes. Warren's theatrical release cut was too short for television syndication. The extra footage involved a group of doctors sitting in an office discussing the Diane Wilson character's various psychiatric problems. The film's U.S. version tagline was. Monsters walk the earth in ravishing rampage of clawing fury. Could it happen? See and decide for yourself. Topic. Warren's added prologue to the U.S. version The film opens with narration by John Carradine, telling the audience why science is a good thing. The scene switches to two doctors discussing the strange case of a patient named Diane Wilson, Barbara Wilson. A third doctor comes into the office holding a skull and proceeds to lecture the other two on how the human ear functions. A flashback sequence begins by showing the audience Diane Wilson's earlier UFO incident. While asleep in her bed, the young woman experiences an extraterrestrial visit, awakening to a horrible, ear-splitting sound that only she can hear. Overcome by confusion, panic, and pain, she runs outside in her nightgown and sees a weird light in the sky. By the time paramedics arrive and take her to the hospital, she is in a catatonic state and no longer able to explain what she has experienced. Doctors cannot explain her mysterious condition. Local newspaper headlines wonder if what happened has something to do with a reported UFO sighting in the same area that night. Before this can be determined, she recovers completely, leaves the hospital, and flies to Sweden. At this point, the storyline of the original Swedish film begins. Topic. Soundtrack The Swedish film's original end title ballad, Midnight Sun Lament, is based on an old Swedish melody, music and Swedish lyrics by Gustav Unger, English lyrics by Frederick Herbert. Topic. Home media A special edition DVD of the original 1959 Swedish theatrical release, under the film's international title Terror in the Midnight Sun, was released by Something Weird Video on July 10, 2001. It still remains in print. The DVD also includes Jerry Warren's heavily re-edited 1962 U.S. release, Invasion of the Animal People, and a selection of short Swedish films and Swedish movie trailers from the same period, rounding out the package. <laughs>